it's just so much pain when you reveal yourself on film and you make certain, uh, you know, sometimes it's like looking at a, bad, at a report card. But now I'm here straight, no chase. I'm going to speak from my heart to let you know the real, real, real deal that ain't in the film. So if y'all bear, bear, bear with me, put your seatbelt on, straight, no chase. I will entertain every question, break everything down, the real deal, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. I have to really thank Charlie because Charlie really loves my work. He sees a greater value of it. And I really appreciate that because I do need a voice. And I understand that now like never before. I thank the creator every day for giving me the ability to see. And I feel that with this divine gift, I have to use it to make a contribution to world history and culture. And that's what I'm really about. Uh, when the film was made, I didn't really have a clear understanding of my purpose in life. I really didn't. I had just came down after working 20 years in, in corrections, and in a sense, I was just moving. I, I, and I've been on a sabbatical since the first screening because I'm pain. I'm a wounded man. I've seen a lot. So many people I photographed died. You know, the crack epidemic def decimated my generation. I'm a product of Vietnam, the Vietnam generation, and so much. So my work is about trying to talk to brothers. I didn't really want to get too deep uh, with Charlie at the time, because I was still trying to find my voice. And I'm a very private person, so I wasn't really trying to go too deep with who I am and what I really represent. You know what I mean? Because it's something that a lot of people are not really ready for. But I am a product of the black arts movement in the 1960s. I believe in that wholeheartedly, that as an artist, I have a responsibility to use my voice to talk to the people. And I became very enlightened when I was stationed in Germany. And like I said, I came home on a mission to talk to my brothers because I have photographs in my book back in the days and time before crack and I got killers and victims. I knew brothers that killed brothers that I know personally. And I came home not understanding like what the hell is going on here? How come people are not teaching and doing their job? I took a pledge when I was 15 years old that I have a duty and responsibility to my people and my community and I have to utilize my voice to make a difference. How can we begin to kind of shift uh, the narrative so that we're teaching uh, people how to, you know, how to create meaningful documentation of their experiences, of our experiences, um, so that it's something that we own and that we can pass on to our children and that is not necessarily other people, you know, uh, defining our stories for us. We have to retain the history because when you understand that history, you could pass it on to the next generation. So get your aunts, your grandparents, family members, and talk about this struggle, their sacrificing and pain. Ask them where were they at when Martin Luther King was assassinated. Ask them did they make it to the 1963 March in Washington. We have to use the technology that's readily available to us to get these stories. But we need to start with our family. My father died before I really had an opportunity to get deep into his family history. Fortunately, I have the albums. I'm able to hold on to those visual memories, but the stories behind the imagery is gone. So now, in the, in the day of modern technology with cell phones and iPhones and all the, these apparatuses that could be utilized to record the, the, the oral history, let's use that and start with our family, because there's so much we don't know. And as the generation starts to pass on, there's things that we don't know. My daughter's a journalist, so I encourage her to, when she first started out, Interview all the family members. Talk to your grandfather about what was it like being in the South during World War II. Talk to all your aunts. When you get on the phone call, have your pen and paper and interview them. So let us start with our own family first. 